At the end of the Second World War, Berlin crumbled under the intense artillery barrages and the fighting between the remaining parts of those defending Hitler's capital and the Soviet Red Army. Within those final days, Hitler died inside of the Führerbunker and his body was burned within the Reich Chancery Garden, as was the remains of Joseph Goebbels and his wife. But with the fall of the Third Reich, a huge amount of looting occurred inside of Hitler's governmental buildings. The Red Army stormed in and soldiers took whatever they could, but this was common across all armies, as American forces looted houses, such as the Birkhoff or the Eagle's Nest, and took their treasures. The new Reich Chancery was the heart of Nazi government, and the fighting around here was very fierce, and still today there are many objects relating to Hitler and the Nazis that are missing, including his treasured globe. However, on a recent visit to a brilliant museum in Dorset, in England, I came across an artefact with a very dark and disturbing story behind it. Inside of the fantastic Keep Military Museum in Dorchester is a piece of furniture where some of the most barbaric orders that led to executions, torture and death may have been signed on. This is the story of Hitler's desk. Welcome to the Untold Past. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Hitler's desk, which today sits inside of the Keep Museum in Dorchester, is a rather poignant reminder of the evils of the Third Reich. It might appear to many who walk past just a heavy lump of wood in which Hitler would sit and answer correspondence and work at. However, let's remember what sort of man would be sat there. This was a man who was responsible for the slaughter and executions of millions of people in a war where he was the main aggressor, and standing by the desk today, it's strange to think that Hitler actually sat on here and worked. It is in very good condition, and is made from very thick pieces of wood. There are a number of drawers in the desk, and the tabletop itself is very thick. This would have been a piece of furniture which did not move often, as it would have taken many people to lift this. It clearly was specifically made for someone very important, and there is a small place in the middle of the desk for Hitler to have sat at, with his chairs and legs under the tabletop. There are some scratches and marks on the tabletop, including a large circular mark, showing that Hitler probably did not use a coaster when consuming warm meals on the desk. He clearly hadn't been told off by someone for this, unlike most of us. There are also a number of marks for wear, and it would have likely had other items which were placed on here, such as an in and out tray, as he would have to deal with lots of different correspondence throughout the day. But the desk had come from the Reich Chancery, and specifically Hitler's private rooms within the governmental headquarters. The new Reich Chancery had in the years before been known for its luxury and huge expense, and it was a place compared to some of the most lavish palaces across Europe. When Albert Speer, Hitler's architect, visited, he claimed, from Wilhelmplatz, an arriving diplomat drove through great gates into a court of honour. By way of an outside staircase, he entered a medium-sized reception room, from which double doors, almost 17 feet high, opened into a large hall clad in mosaic. He then ascended several steps, passed through a round room with dome ceiling, and saw, before him, a 480 feet, 150 metre long room. Hitler was particularly impressed by my gallery, because it was twice as long as the Hall of Mirrors at Versailles. Hitler was delighted. On the long walk from the entrance to the reception hall, they'll get a taste of my power and grandeur of the German Reich, he said. During the next several months, he asked to see the plans again and again, but interfered remarkably little in the building even though it was designed for him personally. As Hitler died inside the underground complex, known as the Führerbunker, hostilities within Berlin would come to an end days later. But there was chaos around the Reich Chancellery and the governmental buildings. This area had been under a huge amount of artillery barrage, and parts of it were in ruin and destroyed, and there were also many dead soldiers and civilians all over the area. One witness to this, Andrei Gromovko, the future Soviet foreign minister, who went inside and witnessed the Reich Chancery, claimed, Doors, windows and chandeliers testified on them, the big imprint of the battle, most of them being broken. The lowest floors of the Reich Chancery represented chaos. Obviously the garrison of the Citadel fiercely resisted here. All around lie heaps of crossbeams and overhead covers, both metal and wood and huge pieces of ferro concrete. On both sides of a narrow corridor, there were certain disposed cells, all eroded by explosions, all this produced a grim and distressing impression. If photography of this underground citadel of Hitler existed, there would be a proper illustration of Dante's hell, just select which circle. 
The Wright Chancery was in its heyday a huge complex of 420 rooms, and the main gallery was twice as long as mentioned as the Hall of Mirrors, but Hitler's study in particular was known to have been two stories tall. Later different war developments were made, such as adding air raid shelters. It was intended to be a suite of rooms and governmental buildings that were meant to impress, but also intimidate visitors or leaders of other countries, and Hitler insisted the designs of the buildings be as large as possible. It was meant to be an overwhelming display of architecture, power and might, and there were Nazi symbols and insignia all over the rooms. But it was claimed that the right chancery was almost destroyed and lay in ruin, with only much of the walls and shrapnel damage everywhere. But there was a lot of looting that took place inside of these buildings, and the Soviet soldiers stormed in and took whatever they could. In this chaos, as mentioned, Hitler's globe from his study went missing, but the desk may have been taken during this, and it was found to have been inside of Hitler's private office in the Reich Chancery by Soviet soldiers. The desk was then presented to Major General Alec Bishop, the British Commissioner for the District of the North Rhine, Westphalia, and an officer from the Dorset Regiment. The desk was then its belief shipped back to Britain before in 1950 it was donated to the Keep Museum in Dorchester. What is also captivating is what was found inside the desk when it was handed over. It was clearly a piece of furniture in which Adolf Hitler had sat at significantly, and the signs of wear showed it had been used a lot, but inside of the desk were some personal items of Hitler's stationery, and remarkably a signed Christmas card dated 1943 from Hitler. A note which was typed from Major General Alec Bishop, on paper headed with the detail of the Land Commissioner's office in Dusseldorf, claimed, In September 1945, the Russian army started to remove furniture from Hitler's chancery in the Russian sector of Berlin. The Russian officer responsible for this work offered me a wooden writing table, which he had told me had been taken from Hitler's offices in the chancery. Those who visited the chancery in these days will remember that the whole place was in a state of confusion, with a large amount of furniture, some of it badly damaged, scattered in all directions. On the following day the table the Russian officer had shown me was delivered at my residence by the Russian army. Major General Bishop even claimed that he used the desk inside his own house for a few years before he donated it. His account raises a number of interesting points and questions. Bishop claimed that the desk was taken months after the Battle of Berlin and that the desk was a writing table from the private offices. So the desk was not removed in the immediate aftermath of the Battle of Berlin but was taken in September with the clean-up of Berlin well underway. But what shocks me is the fact that this writing table could have been the very place where Hitler himself had written a number of orders and ideas that led to the slaughter of millions of people all across Europe. Around this desk, Hitler would have held meetings and discussions about some of his deadliest policies with men such as Hermann Göring, Rudolf Hess in the early war years, Heinrich Himmler and many others who would later become known as some of the most evil war crimes in history. With Hitler's office being two stories within the Reich Chancery, it's likely that the writing desk was found inside one of these rooms. One thing to note is that some images of Hitler's study do show a different desk being used, meaning that this one likely came from one of the more private suites used by Hitler. The desk in the picture is much larger and seemingly less practical, and the writing table certainly belonged to Hitler based on what was found inside. His personal stationery is a big giveaway with this. But the thought that Adolf Hitler sat on the desk which was in front of me was very scary, and the fact this desk could have been rested on while some of the most evil actions and orders were signed off on is a sobering thought to have. This bulky large wooden table most probably played its role in the deaths of millions of people during the deadliest conflict in world history. But if you are in the Dorset area or visiting the south coast of England, make sure to pop into the Keep Museum, as they do have some other remarkable items in their collection. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.